Today I'm going to be changing a head unit on a bike. This happens on occasion when folks lose their keys or just if something stops working. Of course we sell these head units. This is what I'm referring to with keys and the wire hanging down for, I don't know, it's around 90 bucks. Um, I have one that's bad. The headlight didn't work. See, it says so right there, bad head. At any rate, uh, I thought I, as is always my want, I would go ahead and videotape as I do this process. Uh, the first thing I did was I brought it inside where I can work comfortably. You always want to make sure that you disconnect, whether you uh, separate into two halves or not, that you disconnect these cables from the battery or from the rear half. Because as you're cutting, which I'll be doing in a moment, the wires, the two wires coming out of here to splice in the new head unit, uh, you don't want to short things out. And I assure you, it will if you cut into that with these wires connected. Probably won't hurt anything, but it will scare the hell out of you. Uh, the first thing I'm doing is I'm going to go ahead and peel back this tubing very carefully, not to pull excessively on these wires. I don't want to create more problems than I have. And then next thing I'm going to do is to go ahead and unwrap this electrical tape, see what I'm up against. The goal will be to cut these um, as high as possible, allowing me some extra slack to work with as I'm doing my splice. Okay, I went ahead and severed the two wires going to the head unit. The light's a little bad here, but you can just see the two wires. And I cut them enough to where I have plenty of room to work when I strip back the shielding carefully. And I make my splices of the various colors matching them up. That uh, I have room to go ahead with some heat shrink. It will look like brand new professional job. I went ahead and peeled back the tubing. I split it with my knife very carefully just to see what I was up against in here. A lot of this was, uh, as you saw in the previous segment, it was uh, uh, electrical tape together. I wanted to see what was under there. There were a couple of joints exposed, which is fine. They're not going to short out where wires were spliced. Um, but it, look, I can't control everything. It's a little bit cheese ball. But what I did, I put some electrical, electric, pardon me, liquid electric tape on those splices that were exposed inside of the electrical tape. Uh, you know, while I'm here, I might as well do that. And then what I'll do, I'll put this back when I'm finished and I'll put a tie wrap around there or glue it, depending on what I wanna do and how ambitious I feel. But this is uh, nothing to be afraid of, guys. Just match the colored wires and you'll be fine. Okay, I've got the head unit removed, as you see. A uh, little, little hint that I do my OCD coming out a little bit. I scabbed off as many parts as I could. Not that I've ever had these retaining clips uh, break yet, but uh, you won't need to save the retaining clips. But I do suggest you save the little screws that you can get off of here, because on occasion, if they fall out of here, you'll have a replacement screw, either for your beauty caps on your rings uh, on your wheels, or for the screw that if it were to come out of this ring here, which holds it onto your head unit. Uh, I'm saving these because, of course, I put together a lot of bikes. I've never had one of these break yet, but, you know, the day after you throw them away, one will happen. So, just a little hint, and this is going in the, uh, in the, in the waste receptacle. Okay, I went ahead and stripped back one of the wires. So I'm going to do one wire at a time, and here's why. Um, if I strip back all the wires, I want to make sure that I don't inadvertently mix up the two blues. There's blue on the other wire as well as here, as well as a red. So I'm going to do one wire at a time. Now, now <coughs> excuse me, you may notice that the yellow one is shorter, and here's why. When I was stripping off the shielding, meaning the thicker outer, I accidentally nicked that wire. So I went ahead and cut it back, and then on my head unit, I stripped away the outer shielding and of course stripped the wires leaving uh, I trim back the red green and blue and left the yellow one long so that it'll kind of match up um, little hint for you these are t for your stripping gauge these are 26 gauge okay which is the smallest one oh you can't see it on here anyway it says 26 and the shielding itself I found out the hard way is actually a uh, 14 gauge, which is the second one in. Let me see if you can see that 14 and there's the 26. So to strip the shielding, I used a 14 gauge and the wires were 26 gauge. Now I'm going to, I went ahead and pre-cut my heat shrink. When I shrink, pardon me, when I 
splice these together and solder them together, which I'll show you in a moment, I want to already have the heat shrink in place and way away from the heat source so that it doesn't shrink itself onto the wire before I'm ready to do it. Now, I make my heat shrink about three times the length of what I know what the splice will be. After I twist in the wires from the head unit to this red one as example, it's going to be about half this size. So I made this three times the size. That way I have plenty there and plenty on the other side of the wire. It's a good idea to invest, folks, in some um, marine grade heat shrink, which has adhesive lining to it. Now, I don't have that here. I bought one of these kits, but I have a way around that. The adhesive in the heat shrink is worth spending a little bit of extra money because it will actually seal, not only shrink around the wire, but seal itself to it. I have a way around that with standard heat shrink. It's called liquid electric tape, as I mentioned before. I'm going to go ahead and seal up the ends, which would accomplish the same thing. But the first thing I'm going to do is to make sure that I feed these wires in the proper orientation to the brake cable, which would be right under here. You don't want to say, oh, dog on it. I did it on the opposite side, and now I have to cut everything and resplice it. So just, you know, take your time. This isn't hard. You'll see my finished product here in a moment. Okay, my wires are all stripped. My soldering iron is heating up. By the way, this is a nice little deal. You can run this on a battery or on 115, and I like it because you can uh, adjust the temperature for such thin wires. I don't need a lot of heat. So I'm going to turn her down to about there, nonetheless. Um, I pre-positioned the heat shrink, as I mentioned there, and I put a little bend in the wire just to keep it from sliding down as I'm working towards my heat source. All of my wires have their heat shrink. To include, I put a big piece of heat shrink, which will go over all of it on the other side. Hopefully it's not too close to the heat source. I got it as far as I could, but I suspect I may be cutting some of this off as the end shrink as I'm soldering. But uh, be that as it may, I'm going to twist these wires together, appropriate color to appropriate color, and I'm going to go ahead and solder it. I'm going to go ahead and put the heat shrink over it. Now, you can splice these guys, but the Air Force spent a lot of money teaching me how to, how to solder, so I feel I owe it to them to do it uh, what I call the right way. Um, they also have these handy little items here where it's actually heat shrink and solder all in one, an adhesive heat shrink as well. That's what the red is. But anyway, it's got a little bit of solder in the center, so what you would do is, if I can hold the camera and do this with my fingers, you're going to match them like so. Okay, the two wires inside of the silver part, which is the heat shrink and a heat gun. It's a very low temperature solder, so a heat gun will actually solder the two wires while it's also going ahead and heat shrinking the unit. These are kind of handy. You can get them in various sizes. I think they're pretty neat. But I'm going to do it old school because, as I said, I think I owe it to the USAF for all the money they spent teaching me how to solder. Okay, I'm ready to solder my first wire. Again, the heat shrink is pre-positioned way away from the heat source or at least as far as I can get it from there and what I did I twisted the wires and when I let me see if I can hold this camera when I put them together like so I twisted this wire this way and this wire the other way it makes a very nice connection and a very strong joint I call it the Steve method although I'm sure other folks do the same thing at any rate I'm going to hit this with a little bit of solder with my uh, heat to heat your work not the solder remember that folks I'm going to heat this up and then touch it with a little solder. You'll get a nice silver finish part. And then I'm going to slide my heat shrink over and heat shrink it. And that wire will be done. And there you have it. That is a properly soldered joint. Not my best work, but it will certainly suffice. Again, the bigger the glob, the better the job is not the case. As long as you can see the wires and everything, you got a nice silver finish. That's more than adequate. I'm going to go ahead now and slide over my heat shrink, kind of feel for where the beginning and end of the joint is, right about there. I'm going to hit that with a heat gun, and that wire will be finished. And there you have it. I hit the uh, heat shrink with my heat gun, and as I said, because this is not marine grade and because I am a bit uh, thorough, kind way to say it, I got some liquid electric tape, and here's how I'm going to overcome that with it not being adhesive line solder. 
I'm just gonna put a little bit of this. It comes in a handy little tube. I find it easier to work with. I'm gonna put a little bit on that end there. Mush it around a little. And a little bit on that end. And that's gonna pretty much seal that up so no condensation or moisture can get in there. It wouldn't really hurt anything unless the condensation and moisture would have shorted, made a, a, a bridge, a connective bridge from that to the next heat shrink. And the odds of that are pretty slim to none, but I'm just being extra thorough, that's all. Okay, they're all soldered. They are all heat shrunk on my first wire bundle. Now I'm gonna slide my larger heat shrink over this whole thing cover it up and seal up the ends and that'll be done. I also uh, mounted my headlight right here just to keep the wires in a workable area. So again, why am I describing this in such detail? Well, because I like to hear myself talk, perhaps, but I like to think the real reason is I don't want anybody to be afraid of their bike and be afraid to do things like this. It's nothing I did is hard. And quite frankly, you'll have a great sense of accomplishment after doing a nice job like this. I'll show you the finished product and then I'm going to go ahead and uh, repeat on the other wire and I'll be all finished. And there we have it, all done. The large heat shrink was placed over the connections and uh, just about good as new. Very, very close second. I'm gonna go ahead and uh, I'm gonna go ahead and wrap all this up with electrical tape neatly like it was, maybe a little better. And everything's sealed up, wire spliced. Just don't get frustrated, you'll get it. Just take your time, not a hard job at all. Nothing I did, anyone couldn't do. Take care.